So yeah, really impressed by what this thing can do. And of course, I mean, we could have always installed Windows on it, but I really wanted that Steam Deck interface, kind of a Linux gaming PC with a small form factor that can game at 1440p. And this thing gets the job done. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a small form factor Linux gaming PC that can play basically anything at 1440p. We're going to be using Bazai OS, and I know a lot of my viewers are familiar with that operating system, but if not, just think Steam Deck interface on a more powerful PC. That's exactly what we have here with Bazai, and given the specs of this small form factor PC, we're going to be able to play anything on this unit. What we've got here is the Geekcom Mini Fun 11. Odd name, I know, but it is packing some really good performance here. When these were sold over on their website, they didn't contain a GPU. And basically what we have here is a Cougar aftermarket case for the Intel NUC Extreme 11. This was from when Intel was creating those NUC Extremes. We've got an i9-11900KB. I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte M.2 SSD. And this does come with a 500 watt SFX power supply pre-installed. Taking a look inside of this thing, Intel called these elements. Basically, this is going to contain our cooler, our CPU, our RAM, and our storage. It's going to slot down inside of a specially made PCIe slot. And, you know, with that, there's another PCIe slot so we can add a pretty powerful GPU. But pulling the front off, we've got our fan over there. Inside, cooler, three M.2 SSDs can be added to this element and dual channel SODIMM DDR4. During Intel's run with these, they did make several different variants, all the way from the i5 up to the i9. Now this is the 11th gen NUC Extreme, so we've got that i9-11900KB, eight cores, 16 threads. And keep in mind, the 11900KB is a desktop CPU, it's not a mobile CPU. Along with this, they did pair this up with a 500 watt SFX power supply. And right down here, we've got our PCIe slot. Believe it or not, even though this thing is so small, it'll support a triple slot GPU. And since we're going to be running Linux here, I definitely wanted a Radeon card. For this, we're actually going to be adding the Radeon RX 7800 XT from Gigabyte. Got 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. And yeah, this thing's a hoss. I mean, it's definitely not the biggest RX 7800 XT on the market, but it will fit inside of this case. So it does support up to a triple slot. This is actually around a two and a half slot card. If we kind of angle it right in here, we don't have to remove anything but the side panel. We can slot it right down in that PCIe slot. I've already plugged in my two eight pin connectors here. So we're gonna get plenty of power to this GPU. And Geekcom did jazz this case up with two RGB fans. They actually look pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of RGB, but when it's done tastefully, I think, you know, it can definitely work out. With something like this, it can be totally disabled if you're not into it. Now, I've already got Bazai installed on my M.2 SSD. Go ahead and boot into it. After that, I actually want to connect this to my game capture because there's a few things that I'd like to show you here. But so far, been doing a little bit of testing here and there with it. This thing performs really well with this operating system installed. And again, if you don't want to run Linux, a PC like this will totally support Windows 11. You can game on it all day like that. But I love having that Steam Deck interface, especially for somewhere like the living room. If you've got a couple wireless controllers connected, it really makes for a great little console PC style unit here. Just super easy to navigate. You don't even need a mouse and keyboard plugged in to kind of get through the whole operating system. You can use solely just a controller. So far, this setup's been working really well with Bazite, but I did run into one issue. Now, it's fixed and it just kind of fixed itself. With Starfield, going into the game, I maxed it out. It wasn't at the frame rate that I was kind of looking for, so I turned FSR on. As soon as I did that, it kind of stopped using the GPU. It dropped down to around 5 FPS. Restarted the game. Everything works fine now. I've gone through, tried to recreate that issue. Couldn't get it to work. Little bug here and there, but uh, other than that, everything else that I've tested here has been working great. Over here, we do have our performance overlay. We can set it up to uh, you know, show everything that's going on. I'm gonna leave it on three right now. Disable the frame limiter right here in the uh, menu. Half rate shading. Everything that we have on the Steam Deck is working on this PC here. And real quick, let me show you. If we head into our settings uh, system, move down just a bit. You can see we've got the Intel Core i9-11900KB. 8 cores, 16 threads, I've got 32 gigs of DDR4, and that AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT. 16 gigabytes of VRAM, 
So obviously, I mean, we've got a pretty decent PC here when it comes to a Radeon card. Going with the 7900 GRE would have been nice, but it just won't fit inside of this case. Either way, I think at 1440p, with a few of these settings maybe tweaked a bit, this is a great Linux-based gaming machine. And with Bazi installed, it just makes it really easy to kind of get up and running. We also have a full desktop. So if we go to our power, switch to desktop, We've got everything we need here for a desktop operating system. And Bazite does come installed with a bunch of great stuff, but it's super easy to get more installed. With their setup manager, we can pick and choose exactly what we'd like here. So if you want EMU deck for emulation, you can go ahead and enable it from here if you need to. Uh, there's a ton of other stuff here. So if I just skip this, applications, want some more web browsers, and you can go through and kind of check off what you want, what you don't want. I do like the setup wizard. You can use terminal if you want to just go ahead and install from terminal, or if you want a nice little storefront, discover is right here for you. So yeah, if you wanted to use this as a desktop for everyday use case scenarios, it's got more than enough power here, but really we want to game on this thing. So I'm going to return to gaming mode. Now we can go ahead and get right into some games and we're going to start out here with, let's do God of War Ragnarok. All right, so here we are at 1440p high with FSR set to balanced. And I do want to admit that I have not tested this in Windows with the 7800 XT, so I'm not exactly sure how it performs over there. I took a look online and it seems that high with some FSR is kind of the way to go. Looking at averages of around 81 up to 95, depending on what CPU this thing's paired up with. So we're right there along those lines. And uh, I mean, I kind of expected we'd get some pretty good performance, but I did go into this at ultra with no FSR. And I was kind of surprised to see that we did dip down to around 48 FPS. I was kind of expecting to be able to run this with no FSR Ultra on that 7800 XT, but obviously we did have to drop this down to high and add just a bit of scaling. Next on the list, we've got the built-in benchmark for Black Myth Wukong 1440p high with FSR set to 75%. And these were basically the recommended settings for this system. When you go into the game, you can kind of have an auto config. We got an average of 84 FPS. Of course, we had to test out Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, high, with FSR set to auto. That's kind of how it defaulted when I went up to high settings. Not too bad here. We're seeing an average of around 83 FPS, and I have been doing some testing between FSR 2.1 and uh, they just added FSR 3. It seems that with FSR 2.1, we are getting a few more frames than 3.0, but obviously 3.0 is newer technology. It does look a bit better, even just set to auto or balanced. Doom Eternal, no it's an older one, but we're at 1440, Ultra Nightmare, no scaling. I have the built-in stats up in the top right-hand corner. We're over 200 FPS, I mean well over 200 FPS with this, and I kind of figured it would be the case. I know for a fact that the 7800 XT can play this at an average of around 130 FPS, 4K Ultra Nightmare setting. Here's Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1440p, very high. We don't need FSR. We don't need any kind of frame generation with this. We're seeing an average of 118 FPS. This is one that I've been playing constantly since it was released, and right now we're at 1440p, very high. Had a good feeling we'd be able to run this really well, but I thought going in we may need a little bit of FSR, but with the 7800 XT in Bazite here, we don't need to scale this whatsoever.
faster. I also wanted to test out Starfield, and you know, ever since this game was released, a lot of people have had issues even on higher end GPUs. They've done a lot to fix up some stuff, but even now at 1440, Ultra with FSR set to 70%, figured we'd be seeing a bit more out of it. You can see every once in a while, especially in cityscapes, it will dip under 60 like this. Kind of scale that resolution down, or we can go into the settings here and turn on frame generation. This is going to take us way up, and with those same settings, we're now seeing an average of 94 FPS. So in the end, this is a pretty nice little setup running Bazai, and of course, I mean, we've got a pretty high-end GPU here, that RX 7800 XT isn't cheap. Originally, I was going to go with the 7700 XT, but the only one I have is just a bit bigger from ASRock and it wouldn't fit inside of this case, so I figured we'd just go with that 7800. And really, when it comes down to it, pairing that up with basically any newer CPU is going to give you a very similar performance here in Bazai. You could always build a much larger PC if you want to. I just had this available to me, and I love these small form factor units. Something easy we could set in the living room, connect a few controllers to it, and just game all day. If you're interested in seeing anything else running on this PC, just let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind installing Windows or maybe even a different Linux operating system. And if you want to put something like this together, I will leave links in the description as long as I can find them. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Like always, thanks for watching.